Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Excited to be back with you for another pediatrics NCLEX question video. Uh, I'm doing pediatrics because I have two new grandkids. One has come, one is coming, and I figured I'd better study pediatrics in order to be able to take care of them. So thank you to all of our channel members. Appreciate all of that. Channel membership is available now. It includes access to a live stream once a month, which is actually coming up this week. Well, it's August of 2023, so it's this week if, it, if you're watching it this week. And you can also do small group tutoring with me uh, for next gen. You can go to clinicreviews.com and sign up for that next gen tutoring. Mark Clinic also does small group tutoring. It's phenomenal. It's, it's great tutoring, small group. You can sign up for that as well. And again, the Clinic Review is available on demand online, so it's terrific. So let's go ahead and get started with our pediatric diabetes questions. That's what we're going to be doing this video, a 10-year-old child with type 1 diabetes is scheduled for a physical education class. The nurse is developing a plan with the school nurse to ensure the child's safety during exercise. What is the most appropriate action to take before exercise? Administer an extra dose of insulin before exercise. Provide a car high carbohydrate snack before exercise. Encourage the child to skip the exercise class or monitor blood glucose levels before, during, and after exercise. So I always read the question, read the answers, and then read the question again to make sure I haven't missed anything. A 10-year-old child with type 1 diabetes is scheduled for a physical education class. So type 1 diabetes, 10 years old. So those seem like, I pay attention to the age when it's in the question. I don't pay attention to the age in the answers, but I do pay attention to the age in the question. So it's a 10-year-old with type 1 diabetes. Those seem like key words in the question. Getting ready to exercise, developing a plan with the school nurse to ensure the child's safety. So we're ensuring the child's safety during exercise. What is the most appropriate action to take before exercise? Before exercise. Okay. Administer an extra dose of insulin before exercise. So that is not good because I know exercise does the same thing as insulin. So even in the absence of insulin, exercise will allow your, your cells to take up and use glucose. So if I give insulin and then I exercise, it's like taking a double dose of insulin. So A is out. Provide a car high carbohydrate snack before exercise. Well, exercise does the same thing as insulin. So it seems like it would make sense to eat something before exercise. I don't know about high carbohydrate though. Um, usually uh, when we say a snack, we want it to be kind of a combination of proteins and carbs, but we'll leave it on the list because that's better, certainly better than giving insulin. Encourage the child to skip the exercise class. No, that's not good. We don't, we don't want to take the child out of a normal routine. Normal routine is fine. Monitor blood glucose levels before, during, and after exercise. Well, that seems like a really good idea because if it's low before, then I know they need to eat. If it's low during, I need they need to eat. If it's low after, they need to eat. What if it's high before? Well, let's exercise, see if it doesn't bring it down during, right? So you kind of kind of monitor it. So is it better to just straight up give them a high carbohydrate snack, but not check it? Because if it's most appropriate action, so this is a really a best question. So it's saying you're going to do one, but not the other. So I'm going to give her a carbohydrate snack, but I'm not going to check her blood glucose levels. I'm going to check her blood glucose levels before, during, and after, but I'm not going to give her a snack. So I, I mean, I would rather check her blood glucose levels because that's what's going to tell me what to do. I'm not just going to give her a carbohydrate snack when I don't know what her, what her blood sugar is. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and monitor blood glucose levels before, during, and after exercise. And it doesn't matter that it says the most appropriate action to take before exercise. That doesn't don't, don't let that throw you off. Don't go, well, that's before, during, and after. No, it, it's fine. The parent of a child newly diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Okay, the parent, type 1. Okay, ask the nurse about insulin administration. What should the nurse emphasize as the primary goal of insulin therapy in managing type 1 diabetes? Complete elimination of all symptoms, prevention of short-term complications, maintenance of normal blood glucose levels or restoration of normal pancreatic function. So if you don't know much about type 1 and type 2 diabetes, please go back and rewatch the video that I have on type 1 and type 2 diabetes because I'm not doing pathophysiology of type 1 and type 2 diabetes here. I did that in another video. Um, so let's reread the question. The parent of a new child newly diagnosed with type 1 diabetes asked the nurse about insulin administration. What should the nurse emphasize as the primary goal? 
So of managing. So I'm going to say the primary, I'm going to turn each one of these answers into like a true false. The primary goal of insulin therapy is the complete elimination of all symptoms. Well, that's, that doesn't seem like a true statement to me. That's an extreme statement. I don't like to pick it. That's not, the, if you don't understand that, I, you don't really understand diabetes. So no. Uh, the primary goal of insulin therapy is prevention of short-term complications. It doesn't seem like the primary goal, but I'm, I'm going to leave it on the list. The primary goal of insulin therapy is maintenance of normal blood glucose levels. Well, that seems true. The primary goal of insulin therapy is the restoration of normal pancreatic function. Absolutely not. We can't. If we could do that, y'all, we'd be rich. So no, that's not D. So either the primary goal is prevention of short-term complications or the maintenance of normal blood glucose levels. And the one that if we're talking big idea here, the one that makes the most sense is maintenance of normal blood glucose levels, because that's why we give insulin, right? That's why we do it. All right, next question. A 14-year-old adolescent with type 1 diabetes is admitted to the hospital with hyperglycemia and ketosis. What is the nurse's priority action during the initial phase of action? So this is essentially DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis in a 14-year-old. So again, if you don't understand DKA, please go back and rewatch the diabetes type one and type two video. It explains that. And it's, people have complained that it's too small. If you're watching it on your phone, you can enlarge it. Just enlarge the white screen and you can see it fine. All right. What is the nurse's priority action? Okay. What is the priority action? What is the best nursing action in the initial phase? Administering insulin bolus providing intravenous glucose, administering bicarbonate, or monitoring arterial blood gases. All right, so 14-year-old type 1 diabetes is admitted to the hospital with DKA because DKA is hyperglycemia and ketosis. What is the nurse's priority action during the initial phase? Now, don't let yourself get confused by the fact that it says ketosis. Um, they are in diabetic ketoacidosis, but they're in diabetic ketoacidosis because they have no insulin, okay? They have no insulin, y'all. They have no insulin allowing glucose to get into the cell. Therefore, their fat is being metabolized inefficiently and releasing high ketones because there's no insulin. So what is our priority if there is no insulin? Administering an insulin bolus, that sounds like a good idea. Providing IV glucose? No, they're hyperglycemic. Administering bicarbonate? No, that's not our priority because it's not taking care of the underlying problem. Yes, sure. I mean, it would help, but it's not going to be a long-term solution. Monitoring our AVGs, that's a nice idea, but we have to give insulin. The problem is, oh, I changed the word. <laughs> so I don't know why I did that, but I think I changed it just to make the point that this is actually DKA. We have to give insulin, y'all. We have to, because that is the reason they are in DKA or uh, hyperglycemia and ketosis, okay? So again, if you don't understand that, go back and rewatch that video. All right, question four. The nurse is teaching a group of parents about the early signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia in a child with diabetes. Which symptoms should the nurse emphasize as an early indicator of hypoglycemia? Nausea and vomiting, excessive thirst, blurred vision, or shakiness and irritability? The nurse is teaching, I read the question again. The nurse is teaching a group of parents about the early signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia in a child with diabetes. Which symptoms should the nurse emphasize as an early indicator of hypoglycemia? So we're looking for the earliest. So even if you think more than one symptom is a symptom of hypoglycemia, you want to say what the earliest is. So excessive thirst, I know excessive thirst is hyperglycemia. Um... So I'm crossing that out. Nausea and vomiting, hypoglycemia, maybe nausea. I don't know about vomiting. Blurred vision, blurred vision, maybe. Shakiness and irritability, yes. All right, so I'm crossing off B. I'm not even sure about that A is a symptom of hypoglycemia. So let's just, I'm crossing off A. That doesn't even, that doesn't even sound right to me. So I'm going to go between C and D. So would I expect blurred vision to occur before shakiness and irritability or shakiness and irritability to occur before blurred vision? Well, I definitely expect shakiness and irritability to occur before blurred vision. Now, I want you to notice that I'm doing something different than when it says 
what's your priority or what is the best thing. When it says what's the priority or best, I say I can only do one thing. But when it says first, like which symptom is first, then I'm going to probably see more than one symptom that I like. I just have to figure out which one is first. So I don't say, well, this one, but never this one. I say this one before this one. So shakiness and irritability would be first. So Yes, we are talking about diabetes content a little bit, but I'm also teaching you how to read questions, not to overthink. So don't overthink, y'all. Just use your common sense. The nurse is educating an eight-year-old child diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Which self-care measures should the nurse include in the teaching? Select all that apply. Administering insulin subcutaneously, monitoring blood glucose levels before meals and at bedtime, Encouraging consumption of sugary snacks for quick energy. Recognizing and managing hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia symptoms. Limiting physical activity to prevent fluctuations in blood glucose levels. All right, the nurse is educating an eight-year-old diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Which self-care measures? Self-care measures should the nurse include in the teaching? Now, this is sort of, sort of a two-part question in that you you have to know what you can teach to an eight-year-old. So you cannot teach skills until they're seven. Seven, y'all. Don't teach skills until they're seven. So starting at seven, I can teach skills. So uh, an eight-year-old, what would I teach them about type 1 diabetes? So should they, and then the question is, should I teach them this or not? Is it appropriate for a type 1 diabetic? All right, administering insulin subcutaneously. Yes, that's appropriate because with type 1 diabetes, there's no insulin. So I'm going to do that one. Monitoring blood glucose levels before meals and at bedtime. Well, they can monitor their own blood glucose levels and it should be done before meals and at bedtime. That's the appropriate AC and HS. That's what AC and HS means, before meals, AC and HS, bed bedtime. So yes, I like B. Encouraging consumption of sugary snacks for quick energy for a type 1 diabetic. No, we don't do sugary snacks. We do protein, combination protein carbs. Uh, so no, recognizing and managing hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia symptoms. They are old enough to recognize symptoms so they can memorize, they can learn a list. You know, I can see, you know, if you start feeling shaky, um, and irritable, you might want to check your blood sugar and see what it is. I mean, of course their parents are going to be there too, but I'm just saying we can teach an eight-year-old that. So that's, they do need to know that. Limiting physical activity to prevent blood fluctuations in blood glucose levels. No, we don't, no, that's not appropriate. We don't limit physical activity. In fact, physical activity is one of the hallmark um, non-pharmacological interventions for diabetes. So I'm not going to teach them to limit physical activity. It doesn't matter that it says to prevent fluctuations in blood glucose levels. That, so we don't limit physical activity period. Okay. I think we have one more question. A toddler with type one diabetes, a toddler. So I pay attention to the age and the question is admitted to the hospital with hyperglycemia. The nurse is collaborating with the healthcare team to manage the child's care, which intervention should be included, <coughs> which intervention should be included in the plan of care. Select all that apply. Administering regular insulin via IV infusion, encouraging the child to eat high fat foods to prevent hypoglycemia, monitoring urine ketones and blood glucose levels frequently, restricting fluids to prevent excessive urination, providing small frequent meals and snacks with carbohydrate consistency. All right, toddler. I'm not sure the toddler makes that much difference in this question. So I pay attention to it, but if it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. There's no difference in how you manage toddlers, type 1 diabetes and an adult. With type 1 diabetes is admitted to the hospital, so they're hyperglycemic. The nurse is collaborating with healthcare team to manage the child's care. Which intervention should be included in the plan of care? So this is management of care. If you've taken NCLEX before and you failed in one of the areas you failed in was management of care, this is a management of care question. So when it says, what are you going to include in the plan of care? That's a management of care question. So what is appropriate in managing type 1 diabetes? Do not overthink this. This is a fundamental type one diabetes, you, you, I hope you agree with me that a nurse should not be a registered nurse if they don't know what the fundamental treatment of type one diabetes is. Like it's pretty fundamental, right? This is a fundamental question. 
So don't go, oh no, it's a Santa question. Who cares if it's a Santa question? This is as fundamental of a question as you can get. How do you manage type one diabetes? Well, do you administer insulin via IV infusion when they're in the hospital and they're admitted as hyperglycemia? Absolutely we do. Do we encourage the child to eat high fat foods to prevent hypoglycemia? No, that's not high fat. No, that's not what we do. Proteins, carbs, yes, but not high fat. Do we monitor urine ketones and blood glucose levels frequently for a child who's admitted to the hospital with hypoglycemia? Absolutely. Now you may go, well, we don't do urine ketones. Okay. But is it appropriate? Is this part of the, is this part of the management? Well, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Do we restrict fluids to prevent excessive urination with type one diabetes, a hospitalized type one diabetes? Absolutely not. We don't want, not want them to get dehydrated. Dehydration leads to really high blood glucose levels. Again, if you don't know that, go back and watch the type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And if you watched it and you don't remember it, go back and watch the type 1 and type 2 diabetes video again. Do we provide small frequent meals and snacks with carbohydrate consistency? Absolutely we do. Absolutely. Y'all, this is as fundamental of a question as you're going to get about diabetes. Doesn't matter if it's a child or an adult. Uh, this is as fundamental as you are going to get. So thank you for watching, y'all. We love you at Clinic Reviews. We hope you do very well on your NCLEX. I assume that's why you're watching this video. And we wish you all the best. And we'll see you for the next video. Have a great rest of your day.